So in this video, we're gonna be talking the easiest way to find some success when it comes to drop shipping on Shopify. So I've been teaching people now for over two plus years to build businesses, e-commerce businesses on Shopify, not just drop shipping, but sourcing in bulk and everything that kind of progresses from drop shipping. So it's safe to say I've seen pretty much every way there is to do it. And in this video, I'm gonna boil it down to the two main methods that I see people do. Go through the pros and cons then to help you decide which one is most suitable for you and ultimately give you the best chance of finding that success when it comes to starting a business on Shopify. Now, when it comes to starting a business, then that's exactly what it is. It is a business. And in my mind, there's no such thing as an easy way to make money. There's no such thing as an easy business. So regardless of which one of these two methods you do pick, ultimately, if you wanna be successful, it's gonna take commitment, it's gonna take hard work, and it's gonna take some form of trial and error as well. So with that being said, guys, that's the top of the video. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I really hope you enjoy it. If you do, please do make sure you hit that like button. Any comments or questions that come from this or anything else, just post them down below. I do reply to every single one. Um, and finally, if you do like my content and want to see more, um, please do hit that subscribe button too. With that being said then, thanks again for tuning in. I hope you enjoy it and let's jump straight into strategy number one. So strategy number one that I want to talk about is what I like to call trend hopping. It's the strategy I adopted when I first started dropshipping four years ago now. Um, so I'm going to take you through the pros and cons to help you decide whether this is sounds like a business or a strategy that you'd like to follow. And then we'll move on to the second strategy that I also see most commonly used. So trend hopping, what this basically is, is you pick products depending on what the current trend is and you sell these because they're strong and in demand. They are trends at some points, they spike in popularity and at some points they come down in popularity. To give you an example then here in the UK during winter time, um, it's dark till about seven o'clock in the morning and then it gets dark at about 4 p.m. So people who work a nine to five job, they're forced to commute to work in the dark. They're forced to walk their dogs in the dark because they have to do it before or after work when it's dark so products such as led lights um, spike in popularity whether it's a dog light or a bike light because there's naturally a higher demand for products like this whereas when we move into summertime when it's light at like six in the morning and it's light till like nine o'clock at night then obviously people can do most things in the light there's no need for led lights so those sorts of products would then be at the very bottom of their popularity and i'll put some screenshots up um, as i explain this just to kind of illustrate the point i'm trying to make so if you're looking for the easy or fastest way possible then to see those initial results then trend hopping is definitely the way to go um, in my opinion if there's a natural demand for your particular products there's naturally going to be more people looking to buy your products and therefore it's going to be a lot easier to find those people and target those people when it comes to running ads and therefore you've got a higher chance and an easier chance of seeing those initial results which brings me on to the pros then we've already actually covered the first pro which is fast results the second pro I want to mention is a small smaller financial commitment. So if you're just gonna be trend hopping, not necessarily building a brand, then there's a lot less things that you have to worry about or do to a higher standard in order to see them results. If there's loads and loads of people looking for a particular product, then you can get away with less quality. You can get away with your products not being branded because there's so much demand for it. And if you don't have to do those things, then these are all expenses that you can save on your bottom line. Um, so you can actually adopt the dropshipping model because you don't need to pay for X amount of units to be branded. Um, if you're selling in demand and really popular products, the chances are there's a great supply of them too, which means there's lots of different suppliers that sell them, which means when it comes to sourcing things like content for your ads or content for your posts, then the content is already readily available online, which means you don't have to invest in a videographer to video an ad and so on and so forth. As I've mentioned, you can adopt the dropshipping module, which means it's faster to scale as well and what I mean by that is that if you're drop shipping then your supplier pretty much takes care of the whole keeping the product in stock kind of thing they have to worry about placing the order or manufacturing them depending on who you're working with and the only thing you have to focus on is scaling your business all you have to do is sell them and let your supplier deal and worry about keeping them on their stock so they can supply to you the worry they will have if you start doing some significant volumes is that if they run out of stock you will move on to a different supplier and they'll lose your business. So that responsibility then becomes on them and it's in their own interest to keep up with your demand and keep the products on their shelves. And the only limiting factor really when it comes to scaling a dropshipping business 
is how much cash you have and worrying about cash flow in your business. The more money you have to put into more ads and obviously make sure you can fulfill your orders, then it pretty much is limitless, obviously to some extent. Moving on to the cons then, because it's important that you are aware of these before you make the decision to go into trend hopping, because while it may sound like the easiest method, there's definitely some cons you need to be aware of. So number one is it's less sustainable. Obviously, if you're selling trending products at some point, they're going to come down in popularity. And what that means is going to be less people after, less people looking for, less people buying your products. So unless you have a product to actually replace those sales, then your business could pretty much go to zero in the space of a couple of months. So if you're a complete beginner and you haven't sold for a full 365 days in a year, and you don't necessarily know what products sell and when, um, then just something to keep in mind that just make sure you make the most and milk that product as much as possible because when the next season comes along or whatever it is then your business might not be doing or making as much money as you hoped it would. The next kind I want to cover is they're less profitable to some extent. It's kind of double-edged. It depends on how you set your business up. Um, so if you are going to be trend hopping then obviously it's going to be really difficult to kind of build a brand around a business that sells lots of different types of products because at one point of year you're going to be marketing to say cyclists at the next point in the year you're going to be marketing to say um, dog owners and then gardeners and so on and so forth so it's really hard to build up a diff um it's really hard to build up a solid kind of and loyal customer base and following on social media versus somebody who builds a brand from the very beginning and all of their followers, everybody on their email marketing list is all gonna be interested in the same products. Whereas if you're gonna be trend hopping, the chances are those products will vary from niche to niche, which means the only traffic you'll get to the site or at least the majority of the traffic you get to your site will always come from running ads, paid ads. And obviously as long as you're paying for ads, then that's gonna affect your bottom line and therefore it's gonna be less profitable. If we verse this against the second method, which is brand building, there will come a point in time where you have so many followers across all of your socials and you'll have such a huge email marketing list that all you have to do is simply put out an email or put out a text or put out a post on your socials and you'll bring on such a significant drive and amount in traffic um, that you'll be able to sell out in a certain collection or a certain product range or, or whatever it is. The flip side of this then, like I mentioned, it's kind of like a double-edged answer is that if you progress from drop shipping into sourcing bulk, and then of course this is gonna make your profit margins a lot more healthier. But if you do, then the other headache you have to be aware of, because this is something that I suffered um, when I was new to it, is that when you're, send, when you're selling trending products and you have them on a shelf somewhere physically, whether that's in your garage or a fulfillment center, as a product comes out of trend, if you still have a thousand units left of something and it's six pallets worth, then that's essentially six pallets worth of space that you need to have for the foreseeable until that product comes into trend again. And obviously if you're using a fulfillment center, they're usually gonna charge you per pallet per week, or you have to rent a unit or space to keep them in, and then you have to pay transportation costs as well if you don't have the means to do it yourself. Moving on to strategy number two, we're gonna be talking about brand building. And what this is essentially is, regardless of what time of year it is, whether it's light outside, dark outside, then pretty much what people tend to do is they pick a niche they have a keen interest in themselves, which which then gives them many advantages. So the first couple of advantages, uh, when it comes to producing things like content, when it comes to finding and sourcing products, you know what a good product is, you know what good quality is, you know what's expected. It comes easy writing captions on Instagram posts, you know what people will find funny within a certain space. Let's give an example then, I'm a keen golfer. Somebody could give me a golfing product and I could probably tell you within 60 seconds of handling it, whether somebody could make a business out of it or not. Um, or I could give them a pretty good idea at least. Because I know golf, I know golfers, I play it a lot. Um, I know the market relatively well, quite naturally, because of the amount of time um, and money I invest into it because I enjoy it. Moving into other pros then when it comes to building a brand from day one. Um, the first one I wanna talk about is being really profitable in the long run or they have the potential to be. I touched on it slightly earlier on in the video that if you wanna start a golfing brand, for example, and selling golfing products and you spend the first two years, that might sound quite extensive, but if you spend the first two years building your socials and you can get to the point where you have 5 million followers across all platforms. Not only is that a significant amount of traffic you can drive to your site um, to drive sales, 
but it's a significant amount of information too that you can get on your site for free. You can use your pixel to kind of optimize and let Facebook learn pretty quickly or over time without having to spend money on ads testing um, who your ideal customer is, who the people are buying. You can then use that information to target a lot higher quality audiences and capitalize on that. So in the long run, typically they'll be more profitable because you have to pay for less ads because you'll build up a significant following. Plus the ads that you do run will be a higher quality they have a higher hit rate and therefore they'll be more profitable. Point number two is it's a lot more sustainable for the reasons I pretty much mentioned. Number three is lifestyle too. If you build a brand in a particular space that you naturally have an interest in, I think you'll find it, well, you will find it a lot more enjoyable and it will also open up the door to a lot more opportunities. There's so many people that I follow on Instagram or YouTube or whatever it is and they've built businesses from their passions and what leads to them then is if that just made sense is so many different doors and opportunities open for them within the space that they certainly enjoy so for example there's this youtube channel i watched pretty much from the very beginning they start called gm golf they made really fun golfing videos that are really addictive they put out trick shots on instagram and their social following grew really quickly and within 18 months of essentially i think they were working in a coffee shop or something just crazy like that within 18 months they were making videos with some of the like world number one golfers like bryson to chambeau and putting out videos with them in the space of 18 months so by starting a brand in a space that you have a super like a, a, a true passion for um, naturally you're going to work harder on it you're going to put more effort into it because you find the work interesting and enjoyable and plus the the opportunities and doors it will open for you as well um, i think will pay dividends moving on to the cons then of actually building a brand because from what i've just been through with it being more profitable and having kind of life-changing opportunities um, it can sound quite attractive but it's important that you have realistic expectations when it gets into actually building a brand and the biggest one which i think that people will probably struggle with is the time it takes you cannot build a brand overnight unless you have serious cash and when i say serious cash I mean the means to, to pay an influencer to promote you or shout you out. So for example, if you're starting a cosmetics brand and you have the means to pay Kim Kardashian to shout out your brand, then essentially she's built your brand overnight off the back of the following which she has built through Instagram and other other channels. And if you don't have the means to do this, then unfortunately you have to do it the organic way, which is just being consistent with the content you put out across social medias, um, becoming a strategist when it comes to things like the right hashtags the types of content and being really tuned in to what is the most effective way and the more effective you can be in the content you put out then the faster you will build your following and just build it up and up and up over time and eventually it'll be like a domino effect and you'll get to the point where you have such a large following and such a big community that you only have to post or mention a particular product and you'll naturally get traffic to your site to your store um, because of it to try and put a time scale on it then it's really difficult to do because social media can can be really weird and wonderful so some videos i put out for example on youtube will just kind of go dead and get hardly any views some will get more views than i ever imagined so it's really impossible just it can be luck to some extent but if you do decide to go down this method then i wouldn't expect to make a penny at least for the first 12 months just spend those 12 months doing everything prim and proper to the highest quality that you possibly can always building your socials in the background. So when you do say, what you can also do is actually use that time to save up a bit of money to invest into marketing, to speed the process up because ultimately brands are built by people knowing about you. And to do that, you have to put your brand in front of as many people as possible. And you can do that organically by constantly posting and building it up that way. Or of course you can run ads to put your brand in front of people as well. The second biggest con as well, um, when it comes to brand building is they're uh, more expensive. Um, if you want to build a proper brand then your products have to be labeled um, this introduces the added expense of designers introduces the added expense of manufacturing um, and sampling and things like that it all that also then brings on the added time required versus just drop shipping a product that's already on a shelf somewhere in china when it comes to things like creating content if you again if you want to build a professional and proper brand you can't be reposting content from other brands all the time you need to 
invest in your own content creators or do it yourself invest in really good kind of video editing software or photo editing software which leads to more time invested into learning how to use them or paying somebody to do it for you so when it comes to building a brand there's more time involved and there's more money involved and um, when it comes to creating content for your ad then again you can pay you can you either have to pay an influencer to do it it just has to be original content you can only get so far by reposting and using other people's content if, if you want to build a proper substantial brand that's sustainable and can provide you a wealth for many years to come then you have to do it professionally and to do things professionally takes time and it takes money and with that being said then guys i'm going to wrap the video up there i could talk about this for hours and hours and hours i've considered creating a podcast for those people who like to listen for longer and where I can perhaps delve a bit deeper into questions like this. People can submit their questions and I'll get different people on just to kind of discuss them. Just an idea and play with. Anyway, um, again, I'm rambling on, but thanks for watching. Um, I really do hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And one final thing then before you go, um, if you're looking to kind of take the headache out of creating an e-commerce business and you want to learn from somebody with experience and get access to that person to ask some questions um, check out my ecom academy it comes with all of those things everything directly is from me so if you enjoy my content and um, then i'm sure you'll enjoy the ecom academy too there'll be a link down in the video description for you to check out on the information um, there's a callback service too so you can speak to me directly ask me any questions you have about joining um, before you make that decision before you make that investment so thanks again for watching like i said i hope you enjoy these videos um, and i'll see you in the next one